Hi, welcome to Beadwork's Tips and Techniques video series. I'm Melinda Barda, editor of Beadwork, and today I'll be sharing with you some valuable information about beading. Let's get started. There are many different types of seed beads on the market today, and I'll be showing you just a few of the most basic ones that you'll find in pretty much any bead shop that you walk into. So first of all, when it comes to sizes, the most important thing to remember is that the larger the number, the smaller the seed bead. So starting over here with these really, really small little seed beads, these are a size 14. And then we go to size 15. And then these two beads right here, they're actually both size 11s. And size 11s really seem to be the most basic seed beads that you'll find most designers using. It seems like most designs are built with size 11s and then from there embellishments are added with the size 15s I mentioned before um, or connected with some of the larger beads that I'll show you next. The difference between these size 11s here is that the Japanese seed beads are found generally in a tube like this and are pretty consistent in size and shape from one bead to the next whereas seed beads found on the hank like this are from the Czech Republic and they're a little more inconsistent. So your next size larger is going to be a size 8 and from there you move on to a size 6 and often with these larger beads there seems to be quite a bit of variation within the tube so it's a good idea to cull your beads which means that as you're beading to remove the ones that are pretty irregular compared to the bead you used before. And the larger beads here are a size two. And these beads here, they're glass just like seed beads, but they're really large. And when they, once they get this big, sometimes they're measured in millimeter. Next, I'll be showing you the different types of seed beads. The seed beads shown here are very similar to the beads that we just saw in the last segment. However, they have a cut to them. So both of the beads on the hanks here are called charlottes and they're also called one cuts and that's because the bead is perfectly round except for it is faceted just once. It has just one cut down the side of it. And the beads up front here, they're made the exact same way but they're called three cuts because they actually have three different cuts on them. And the reason why you'd like to use these in a design is because that the facets on them are really good at reflecting light and they add a lot of interest to a piece. As you can see here, I use just really small little charlottes with one cut on the outside edges of these flowers just to add a little more dimension and a little more shine. Next I'll show you triangle beads which are also cut but they have more of a defined shape. Another fun shape for seed beads is a triangle. You can see here that the triangles on this side have really sharp, more defined edges than the triangles that are over here. And they're both considered triangle beads obviously, but just notice that they really differ in their general shape from one manufacturer to another. And another thing is the purple beads over here, they're size 11 triangles, but you'll notice that when you hold them up right next to a size 11 seed bead, they'll be considerably larger. And the triangles over here are size 8s. And for an example of how you can incorporate triangles into a design is this cuff over here. And I made this by just working circular peyote stitch from inside out and I didn't have to do any changes in the number of beads in each stitch. Just by using beads that go from smaller to larger, I was able to eventually work my way out to this nice kind of um, sawtooth edge of the triangles. And next I'll show you hex cut seed beads. As their name implies, hex cut beads are shaped like a hexagon. If you were to look down the center of the bead, you would notice that the glass that surrounds the hole has six sides. And just like the other cut beads that I mentioned before, like the charlottes, each side allows the refraction of light so the beads have more of a sparkle to them. 
and they come in a wide range of sizes. The green beads here are a size 14. Here is a pile of size 11s, and then the larger beads here are size 8. And next I'll show you bugle beads, which are often found with hex cut shapes as well. Bugle beads are a long tubular seed bead, and they come in many different styles. These are really fun. They're really long, but they're actually small little coil-like springs, but they're still considered bugle beads. And you'll often find bugle beads that have a twist to them, or they'll be cut like the hex beads I just showed you. But here's a nice little example of how you can just find smaller bugle beads that are very smooth. They often range from three millimeters, and sometimes you'll find them almost as long as 30 millimeters long. The one thing you need to keep in mind when you're working with bugle beads is that the edges can be very sharp and they can actually cut your thread. So you have two options. Some designers, they like to actually come in, pick up the glass beads and file them down so they have smoother edges. Or another alternative is, is that when you're stringing a bugle bead, also just string a seed bead before and a seed bead after so that the smaller seed beads on either side act like a protector for your thread. And so as you work in your design, you will then treat those three beads, the seed bead, the bugle, and the other seed bead, as if it's one bead total. And in this necklace here, this little beaded bead was made with bugles, and the fun part about these is they're actually plastic. And so the designer was able to cut the ends to make them the exact size beads that they want. And next I'll be showing you fringe drops, which is another way to add fun texture to any piece of beadwork. Drop beads are most often used for embellishment. Starting with the little bracelet over here, you can see that the drops make a wonderful fringe outline to this focal bead. And this piece is actually bead embroidered and the drops are stitched right into the fabric that backs this focal bead. And here's another example. This is a little peyote stitch button that I made that you can use as a clasp. And just to finish the top, I just added a very small, subtle little drop bead to the top. Now like most all the other seed beads I've mentioned so far, there are many different styles and variations within this type of bead. Here's an example of a longer one that adds even more texture to your piece because it has a pointed end. And some of them are a little more round and almost bulbous at the end compared to some of the others. And then here's an example of how small you can also find them for your variety of embellishments. And when you're shopping for these beads, you might also see them called fringe drops. And next I'll show you cube seed beads. One of my favorite ways to use cube beads is with square stitch. As you can see in this cuff over here, the bronze beads are all added using square stitch. And the beauty of that stitch is it makes the square edges of the beads just line up right next to each other in a row. And you can see they come in a variety of sizes. And a fun thing about the smallest cubes is that you can actually use them for embellishing. On this necklace over here, the cubes are actually used as embellishment on a ring of peyote stitch. So they're very versatile beads. And next I'll show you some of the most common seed beads, cylinder beads. Japanese cylinder beads are considered a favorite by many beaders because they're very consistent in size. As you can see in the size 8 beads over here, they're really pretty much just like a long tube of glass that looks like it's been cut. And so they create perfect cylinders on the sides. And these also come in a variety of sizes, all the way down to a size 15, size 10s, and also size 11s. And the last beads in the row over here, they're actually called satin finish. But when you look at them closely, it looks like they almost have a million little facets along the outside to help catch the light. 
When purchasing Japanese cylinder beads, you'll notice that they're pretty much made by two manufacturers. Miyuki is the company that makes Delica cylinder beads. And all the beads here shown are Delicas. But another very similar company is named Toho, and they create beads labeled as treasures or Icos. And here's a necklace where you can see cylinder beads being used. Here I use them in a twisted herringbone rope, but I also use them for the embellishment of each of these flowers. Next I'll be showing you bicone crystals. Although these bicone crystals technically aren't seed beads, because they come in a variety of sizes, including these very small 3 millimeter um, and even smaller, they can be great when incorporating them into your bead weaving projects. If you look at this bracelet here by Carol Ohl, you can see that she uses them as the focal for each of these squares. And the nice thing about bicones is that when you do join four of them together, the cut tapered ends of them really fit together and click when you're stitching them around and around. And these are the most common different types of seed beads on the market today and the basic sizes that you'll encounter while working patterns out of magazines and shopping at your bead shop.